a.m. 10 a.m. 6 p.m. California time, you do the conversion. And what we do for Friday is we just set it aside specifically for healing. And we divide it into two, prosperity healing and uh, emotional healing. Now, the question is, why prosperity healing? I know a lot of you know, well, it's prosperity healing. I'm here for spirituality. Let me just get that part uh, clear in everybody's mind, because uh, even if you know it, people forget about it. You can have a good heart. You can have good intentions. You want to help a lot of people. If you're dead broke, you're not helping anyone. You can make it more direct. Okay? So what we always say is spirituality and materialism are two sides of the same coin. Good intention alone will not feed hungry people. Good intention alone would not help people in need. It sets the right direction, but that's exactly why people have problems. They always say, oh, intention is everything. If I just intend it and set the space, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. That's wonderful and, one, <laughs> and amazing that you have a good attitude, but without resources, you do nothing. Simple as that. Okay? That's why when people are spaced out, they go, oh, yeah, you know, we're all one, and I just set the intention. Everything takes care of itself. If you just sit on your ass and don't have the resources, nobody gets help. Simple as that. Clear? So I just want to get that straight. Um, you know, that's why we always say, seekers are achievers. You're a spiritual seeker, that's great, but you also have to achieve. Achieve success, achieve prosperity, because you have a higher purpose. See, a lot of people, they're just achievers, which is good. You want to be successful. But all you, if all you want is to be rich, to have cars, houses, and money, but there's no purpose above it that is beyond the tangible, at some point you quit. Or you do stupid things. Like I know a lot of people who um, have achieved a lot and they go into drugs, they get into you know whatever stuff they're doing because they don't have a thrill anymore. There's no purpose. So spirituality gives you the purpose. There's a part of you that says, okay, I want to achieve because once I achieve, these are these, are these goals I want to achieve. I want to help people. I want to feed hungry people. I want to help my family. I want to do this. In other words, the wealth, the money is a means to an end. That's how you're able to be successful, be financially prosperous, independent, whatever word you want to use, and have a place to point those resources. Otherwise, you just keep accumulating and then what? You can take it with you. <laughs> Even if it's uh, the most expensive car, house, underwear, whatever you call it, you can't take it with you. When the body dies, the body dies. Make sense? So the soul is immortal. The spiritual self is immortal. So you have to have a conversion program. The conversion program is how do you convert stuff that you've accumulated and take it with you? You convert it to good karma. You convert it to love. You convert it to knowledge. You can convert it to uh, spiritual development. And resources allow you to have that conversion program. Because that conversion program essentially is, okay, now you have a lot of money. Now you have a lot of resources. You have the, so as you're going through your spiritual life, you can take those resources, money, houses, whatever it is, and put it to good use to be able to help people, help you learn lessons, so that when your body dies, you're able to extract those energies, for lack of a better way of explaining it, with the soul. So the soul takes it with, with it as it goes to the higher worlds and... You know, later on when you come back and do your spiritual work more, you have the karma credits. That's that, simple. That's how you notice a lot of these billionaires, you know, what did they do? They give their family members, okay, I'll give my family members uh, a few billion each. The rest I'll give it to charity. Of course, you know, you always hear people, yeah, you know, these guys, they're so rich, they're worth hun hundreds of billions and 40, 50 billion. They only give them their family, you know, one or two billion and the rest they give it to charity. Uh, hello, do you know how much a billion is? A billion is a thousand millions. Try spending it. If you're not stupid and buying islands and buying countries, that goes a long way. <laughs> Make sense? So another uh, session, we'll talk a little bit more about why it's important to give and share. Okay? But I'll leave you with this thought before we do the healing. My teacher said, the soul grows through giving, not accumulating. Now, unfortunately, some people who don't see the big picture will say, oh, that means that you don't accumulate anything material. That's not what he's saying. He's saying in the big picture, the soul spiritually grows not by accumulating, it is by giving. So as you have wealth, you have happiness, you have all this stuff, you continue to give and share those because whatever that is that you converted, your soul gets to take it with it. 
That's that. Very simple. Okay? Now, so that's why we have two sessions. One is for prosperity healing and one is for emotional healing on Fridays. And we flip-flop it. Last week, we did prosperity healing at night and we did, um, I think, emotional healing during the day. So we'll, we'll, you know, keep rotating it. And we leave them online. So if there's a specific one you need healing on, whatever, you just go back to their old videos. It's all there. It's either on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, the one in massacre.org and panicking.com. Those, uh, they don't stay as long because the website, I don't know, does crazy things. But the other uh, social media, I leave it there. So you don't have an excuse to go, I missed it. I don't know how to do it. We go to the meditation, we go to the practice, and you just do it. All right? Now, this morning, we'll do prosperity healing for worry. Then tonight, we'll do emotional healing for worry and what's attached to it. Now, the question is, why is worry bad for you? Now, in the Buddhist tradition, one of the ways to explain worry is called negative repetitive thought. Okay? It's one of the causes of suffering. Now, the question is, what is the meaning of negative repetitive thought? When you have a negative thought, which all of us do in response to what's going on, it's a thought. It's something we created. So if you create another one, let's say you worry about you know, not being able to pay your bills and you think of, think of it again and again. These thoughts and emotions we create have a tendency to coagulate. Like qualities attract. So it, it forms as a gray cloud in your aura. Now it does two things. Number one, when you're working, these worry thought forms have a tendency to influence the way you think now and for the future. It's like a program. Number two, it also acts as a magnet for, go, for things to go wrong. Get the idea? So if you don't get rid of them, disintegrate it, guess what happens? Not only does it influence you in the way you work, the way you think, the way you plan, it also attracts bad luck. Because it's an energy that sits in your aura and your chakras. You know, as I always say, people keep talking about uh, law of attraction, right? They always say, oh, yeah, law of attraction, which is a great law. The, but the only thing is they're biased. They only look at the positive side. Oh, yeah, I attract what I want. You know, I'm very loving. I have prosperity thoughts. That's great. And you're absolutely right. The problem is they don't also see the negative stuff we've created in the past. If you don't flush them out, those also have a strong attractive force. Okay, so if you've been long enough with me, you know, in these events and classes and online uh, meditations, we always say, your affirmations are useless if you don't first clean house. That's one of the reasons why people have New Year's Day, what? New Year's resolution, and eh, you're lucky if it lasts a month. After that, the old patterns come back, right? It's just like gyms. A lot of gyms, man, they, they, I've talked to some trainers and people who sell membership. Oh, yeah, man, first month is great. January, February is great. After that, it tapers down. You know why? Because January, February, people say, oh, yeah, I know. I, this, I've been silly ass, didn't do, didn't do any work. I've been lazy. Now I really want to make a new resolution. I'm going to work. But if you don't flush out the old belief systems, if you don't flush out the low self-esteem that causes you to stuff your face when <laughs> you're, you're feeling not too happy and causes the body to gain weight and not move, if you don't get rid of those, this new thoughts of, oh, I want to work out, I want to do this, they get gobbled up. That's how we have a saying, big fish eat small fish. You, know, you go to the sea, big fish eat small fish. Big thoughts and emotions from the past will eat the small ones you create now, no matter how enthusiastic you are. Make sense? That's why healing, meditation, spiritual practice is one of the more effective ways to flush out all these thoughts and emotions from the past. If you don't flush those out, the stuff you create now is constantly fighting with the thoughts and emotions we program in the past. Make sense? And your positive affirmations are great and wonderful. The question is, are they going to get eaten up or are they going to dominate? The only way they dominate if they're stronger and bigger than the ones in the past. Now that you understand what it is, let's go to the how. When it comes to the how, there are many ways to do it. One of them is awareness. Awareness to catch yourself. Okay, I'm worrying again. Okay, these are not my thoughts. These are wrong. Or these are not what I want. You disintegrate it. I said, these are not the I. And we'll go to that in the next session, not this one, because of time. All right? 
So that's one is awareness, to catch yourself. Because without awareness, you subconsciously keep creating the all negative energies. That's why in other schools, they say cancel, cancel. We don't say cancel. We just say disintegrate. Or you can say, oh, yeah, I'm worrying about money. And in reality, I do have a lot of money in the bank and this and this. So what am I worrying? Oh, these are thoughts that are created. They're probably not mine. So you just imagine your hand filled with violet light. Just say disintegrate, erase. There's another way of doing it. Okay? Just to give you an idea. This way thought forms, thought forms, you know, it's a form, are located in specific places. They could be floating in your aura. They could also be in specific chakras. And the way we attack it is we do both. We try to flush out the stuff in the aura, and we also know where they're stored. See, one of the things about pranic healing, uh, as put together by my teacher, Grandmaster Twakok Sui, is he did many, many years of research, and he saw patterns. And that's why I love Tony Robbins. When I talk to Tony, he says, everything's about pattern. Pattern recognition. Once you register and you understand and you know what the pattern is, then you can go ahead and get rid of the bad patterns and create new ones. And I was thinking, that makes sense. So Tony works with emotional patterns, mental patterns. My teacher works with energetic patterns, as in the chakras. So he goes, my dear, I remember my teacher told me, okay, worry thought forms. When a person worries, this is the energetic pattern. These are where the worry thoughts are created, are are generated and stored. Ajna chakra, throat chakra, front solar plexus, back solar plexus, base of the spine, basic chakra. Now, for the ones who are new, I know a lot of you studied seven chakras. You have more than seven. I don't have time to cover it right now. Uh, pick up a pranic healing book, Miracles to Pranic Healing, or any of the uh, classes related to pranic healing in your area or online. It'll talk about the 11 major chakras. The seven chakras are nice, they're interesting, but it's, un it's incomplete. Okay? So just get getting that. So this is the Ajna. The word Ajna or Agna in India means to direct or command. This is the CEO, the big boss. The throat chakra is the chakra of knowledge. It's also the chakra that allows you to express yourself. It's also connected to concrete thinking. I think thinking in details. And you notice people who are good at details have a higher tendency to worry. Because you go... Oh, yeah, man, I made sure that every every little thing is taken care of. Here in the U.S., they say every dot, every I, cross every T. Then you start worrying, okay, did I make sure? Do I remember everything? And then you go, okay, I did, but how about the people around me? <laughs> Notice that? So people good at details have a tendency to what? To worry. So a lot of that worry thought form is here. Next, the solar plexus. It's directly below your sternum. That's where you generate stress energy, front and back. Front is what's going on now. Back soul plexus is repressed or suppressed emotions. And last one, the base of the spine. The basic chakra is connected to money, survival. When the basic chakra is strong, that person has a tendency to have the drive to make money, attract prosperity. When that thing is clogged up, the person doesn't have the motivation to make money as well as attract poverty consciousness. That's that. So those are the patterns my teacher saw. So what we're going to do this morning is as simple as this. We're going to do our meditation first, which is very, very important. That's the part a lot of people in the prosperity classes completely miss. They go, oh, yeah, let's do affirmation. Let's do this. Let's do that. But without enough energy to come in and get rid of it, these energies are stuck. It's just like you're trying to pry stuff off the wall with your fingers when you need a hammer. Make sense? Think about it. How long did it take us to create these old belief systems of worry, not enough money, and so on and so on? It's been a while. So they're strong and they're attached to your aura and your chakras. If you have the energy to get rid of it in the first place, you wouldn't be having it. Make sense? So you literally need a fire hose with a strong enough pressure to pull them out <laughs> or get a, a crowbar. And here's the beauty of meditation. When you do a meditation, especially meditation twin hearts, what are you doing? You're awakening the heart chakra more, the crown. So now you have more spiritual energy coming down. So instead of under a faucet, you're now under a waterfall. That's step one. That means you have a stronger pressure. And then all you got to do is direct that energy to the chakras you want to clean out. Simple. And then when you go into the stillness, 
in the meditation, in the silence, guess what you're doing? You're realizing I'm not the body. The eye is not the emotions or the thoughts. So that means this worry, thoughts, and energies, negative thoughts, negative emotions, poverty, consciousness, these are all fabrications of the self or the I. So right there and then, they lose power over you and you just get rid of it. That is that. Why make things complicated? I've read books on prosperity this thick. The only thing that really matters is two, three pages. The rest are like fillers. Well, you know, we have to be saying affirmations. We're filled with prosperity and abundance and so on and so on. And all it is is just one line. Create, create positive thoughts. Number two, disintegrate all those old negative thoughts and emotions. But it doesn't tell you how. Make sense? So we try to make it simple because your time is valuable. And it's more important for us to just give you the seed information so you know what we're doing and we go into the practice so you have the experience. And then after that, as they say in the shampoo industry, rinse and repeat. <laughs> I mean, do you guys know that? You know, these sh shampoos that you have, they single-handedly doubled their sales, I don't know, 1930s, 20s or whatever, by adding three lines, three words, rinse and repeat. Well, if you rinse and repeat, you use the, the stuff twice. So <laughs> you use it faster, so you buy, buy more earlier. Rinse and repeat. It works, just do it more. So I was reading, I go, yeah, that's the problem with a lot of people on the spiritual path. They don't do rinse and repeat. They just do it once and think, oh, I'll just do this, and for the rest of my life, I'll be fine. Great. First of all, how many years or lifetimes did it take you to create all those negative thoughts and emotions? Number two, after you clean yourself up, does that mean that you don't do it again? Well, I still do. So what happens to those? It's like taking a shower once and say, okay, I took a shower. It cleaned out all the junk from yesterday. And I don't have to take a shower for the next 50 years anymore because I took my shower. Does it make any sense? That's why we have these Anchor the Light meditations over and over again. And we keep reminding you of the lessons over and over again because life happens and number one we need to be repeated uh, we need to be reminded with repetitive teachings and as life happens you need to use the same tools to make it work that's that all right shall we so here's what we're gonna do i want you to first recall this is important it's not absolutely necessary, but it helps. In other words, as you recall what it is you're worried about, about money, about success, about your finances, whatever, it just brings it to the surface because otherwise it's deep inside your aura and your chakras. So when you do meditation, it will still clean it out, but not as much as if it's on the surface. Okay? Now, go ahead and just recall or just think, what are the worries and concerns you have about money, about resources, about your work? about success. Just think about it. Just kind of, oh yeah, that's one of the things I want to work on. Be observant and detached at the same time. Don't go, oh yeah, man, I can't believe it. Then you're screwed. You know why? Then you just added kerosene to the fire. The key is to just identify and observe. Go. Just identify. What is it? What are the, just pick three, or five, three to five. Okay, what is it I'm worried about? Hmm. Okay, how about your income? How about savings? How about how are you doing at your job? About future of your family's finances? Just think about it. Identify and observe. These are the worry thoughts. It's just like you're watching someone, you know, somebody's life, and they by listening to them, you notice that they keep they worry about this, 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 and this. So do that to yourself. Just observe. What are these thoughts and emotions that you worry about? Okay, are you there? Now, next, observe how you feel about them. You feel it, right? Like, yeah, yeah, okay, stop there. Again, you're in the observation phase. So we'll just teach you a short technique right now before you do the meditation to just kind of loosen this up and for a lot of you, you'll notice a difference already. Okay, ready? And part of it uh, is what we do in Prosperity Zen. 
the full program, but we'll use it right now so you can use it. Okay, ready? Observe them. Okay, what is thought number one? Identify, observe. What is thought number two? Identify, observe. Number three, four, five. Okay, good enough. Ready? Put your hand like this. Just smother it in blue paint. Just cover it in blue paint. Just imagine these are clouds covered in blue paint. Lots of blue paint. Hold on to it like this. Just say, these are not the I. These thoughts, these emotions, they're not me. I created them, but they're not me. They have no power over me. Now go like this. Say, cut, disconnect. Say it. Cut, disconnect. These are not me. These are not the I. So imagine taking this dark gray cloud. Look for, I told you to have salt water. If you don't have it, imagine a violet fire. Go like this. Just throw it. Say, disintegrate, disintegrate, disintegrate. Cut. These are not the I. Observe. How do these thoughts? Anybody notice a slight decrease? Let's do it again. Identify. What is the first worry? Identify, observe. Number two. Third one. And I suddenly go, I kind of don't remember. Just do your best. Fourth one. Fifth one. Okay. Most of you would have noticed like it has less sting or less details. That's good. So imagine these just as clouds, thoughts you created, now cover in dark blue paint. Just cover in dark blue light. Grab it, hold it. Now, just in case some of you want to know a little more, if you hold it in your one hand, hold it in your other hand like this, and you compare, do you notice anything different in the weight? <laughs> some of you go, yeah, this thing is heavy. Okay, go like this. Say, these are not the I. These are not me. I created them, but they're not me. They have no power over me. Cut, disconnect, throw it into your fire or your salt water. I have my salt water here. Cut, disintegrate, cut. All right. Observe. Quieter. If I ask you to think of those five things again, what do you notice? Some of you go, kind of blank. Or, I feel detached to it. Exactly. You know why? Because the fact that I had you look at it, just observe it, it comes out of your energy field. When you disidentify, you stop feeding it. When you stop feeding it, then it's easy to get rid of. Otherwise, it has its own power source. Food supply. You. Really? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. That is just to bring it to the surface and also disintegrate a lot of it. Now we go to the meditation and stand under a waterfall. Okay, ready? And then just in case some of you are nosy, I know some of you are meditating, you'll be peeking. If you see me use this crystal, all I'm doing is... As you guys are in meditation, I'm going to use the crystal like an amplifier and a laser to just help flush it out of your system. Okay, so don't go, what is he doing? <laughs> all right, shall we? To the Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, thank you for your blessings. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, compared to whoever you like, personally to my teacher, Master Tawakok Sui Mahagu Jumei, thank you for your blessings. To the angels of prosperity, thank you. In full faith, so be it. Okay, ready? Tap your heart center with your left hand. Tap your crown center with your right hand. Open your hand like this. Visualize the earth in front of you. Be aware of your heart. Fill the earth with beautiful pink light. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow love. Be aware of your heart in your hands and fill the earth with peace and with love. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. Just recall people you know who are going through challenging times with their health, with their finances, with their relationships, with their mental health. Bless them with beautiful pink light and imagine their life turning around and getting better and better. Blessing them with hope and faith in a better tomorrow. So be it. So be it. Now 
Now be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Be aware of your crown. Exhale. And stay on your crown. Your crown is filled with so much golden light. And just repeat after me silently. Our hearts are one. Our souls are one. There's only oneness. Just be still. Now imagine that golden light from your crown flowing down through your hands and filling the entire earth. First, fill your home, your family, with beautiful golden light. Your relatives, your friends, fill everyone you know with beautiful golden light. The people you work with, fill them with golden light. Fill the city, the state, the country. Let that golden light just fill the entire earth. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and kindness. Let all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed with peace, love, and kindness. So be it. Now, be gently aware of your heart and your crown at the same time. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Imagine rivers of golden light just pouring out of our hands, filling the earth. Let it permeate the atmosphere, the people, the animals, the land, the sea, the air. The inner and outer worlds, the physical and the non-physical world. Just saturate the entire earth with beautiful golden light. And just say, our souls are one, our spirits are one. There's only oneness. From the center of the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, let every person, every being in every dimension, every direction, above and below, be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. Kindness. Kindness to all. From the center of the heart of God, may all be blessed with inner peace, inner healing. And at this time, for so many, physical healing, emotional healing, mental healing, and relationship healing. And financial healing. So be it. From the center of the heart of God, may all be blessed with goodwill and the willingness to do good. Not just thinking it, Intending it, but actually taking action and being of service to others. The will to do good. So be it. So be it. Fill the earth with beautiful golden light. So be it. Now gently lower your hands on your lap. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Just be still. On top of your head, imagine a beautiful golden star. Just a beautiful golden star radiating light in every direction. Now be aware of your heart. Be aware of the love you have within your heart. Send the stream of that love up, up to the crown and into that golden light. Just stay there. Just be aware of the love, the light, the joy and the peace within you, within that golden star. Be still. You are the soul, a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. That is your true nature. As you meditate on that light, you realize you are that light. Not the body. Not the emotions or thoughts. Be still. Amen.
Allow your awareness to just drift deeper and deeper into that golden light. Amen. Be still. Just be aware of the inner stillness, the inner peace, and the beautiful golden light. You don't have to see it. You just know you're swimming in it. Let go, let go. Allow your consciousness to just drift into that stillness and that golden light. And let things be. Maintain your stillness. Maintain your awareness. Just listen to my voice. And just silently allow the energy to flow as it's guided. The liquid divine energy is pouring down to your crown. Any negative thoughts and energy in your crown centers are disintegrated, extracted, expelled to the near salt water or violet fire to you. The liquid divine energy is pouring down to the area in between your eyebrows, the Ajna Chakra. Any type of worry, thoughts, and energy is created and stored here, dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled to the near salt water or violet fire to you. It continues to work deep inside your Ajna Chakra. The liquid divine energy is pouring down, down to your throat, your entire neck, and your jaws. Any type of worry, thoughts, emotions, energies, are now being dissolved, disintegrated, completely flush out to the near salt water and violet fire continuously now. Just be still, let it work. The liquid divine energy is pouring down, down to your front and back solar plexus, penetrating deep into your front back solar plexus, breaking up, dissolving any worry, negative thoughts and emotions, anger, resentment towards yourself or other people. Dissolved, disintegrated, flush out to the near salt water or violet fire to you. Like the divine energy continues to work deeply, dissolving, disintegrating, and continuously flushing out all these negative energies. The liquid divine energy is pouring down, down into your spine, entering the base of your spine into your basic chakra. It's going deep into your basic chakra, disintegrating, dissolving any poverty consciousness energies, worries about money, low self-esteem about money, not worthy to be successful. Thoughts and emotions are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled in inner salt water. Any type of laziness energies in your basic chakras are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled in the near salt water. Now, just be still. The liquid divine energy is continuously working on your crown, your ajna, your throat, your front back solar plexus, and basic chakras. Just be still. Disintegrate. 
let it flow out. Like just flush out of your system either near salt water to you or a violet fire. Just listen. Om. 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 Just be still, be receptive, just like keep flowing out. Liquid divine energy is healing your crown chakra, your forehead, your ajna, your throat, your front back heart is cleaning and healing your front back soul plexus, liver, spleen, navel, sex, and basic chakra. Just be receptive. Repeat after me. Verbally. I completely... Deeply, permanently, gratefully accept, absorb, fully assimilate all the divine healing energies on all levels. So be it. Again, I completely, deeply, permanently, gratefully accept, absorb, fully assimilate all the divine healing energies on all levels. So be it. Again, I completely, deeply, permanently, thankfully accept, absorb, fully assimilate all the divine healing energies spiritually, mentally, emotionally, etherically physically and financially, so be it, so be it, and so it is. Now just be still, keep your tongue in your palate, let it absorb. Now gently, slowly, come back, raise your hands in blessing, we'll release the excess energy, keyword is excess energy, excess energy our bodies cannot absorb, so it releases excess energy plus as you bless out the excess energy, any type of kind of lingering thoughts and emotions that are stubborn gets also flushed out, okay, so visualize the earth in front of you, fill it with golden light. Then imagine people you love in front of you. Fill them with golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, happiness, prosperity, and spirituality. So be it. Now be aware of your feet and the base of your spine and your hands. This is very important. Fill the earth below you with golden light. And repeat after me. Let our beloved Mother Earth and all her children and all of creation be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it. Fill the earth with golden light. So it is. Okay, let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme One, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, especially the angels of prosperity. Give thanks whoever you like. Personally to my teacher, Master Chokok Sri Maha Thank you. In full faith. And so be it. So it is. All right, this is a short meditation, but uh, we crank up the intensity. All right, just a quick test. Remember those five, five uh, worries I had you think of earlier? How are they now? Some of you going, what? Exactly. If you still have it, this thing is online, press play again. <laughs> you see, the key here is repetition. So it's just like if you're trying to clean something out, if the first blast of water is not good enough, do it again and again and again, and it just keeps cleaning out the stuff. You know, it doesn't have to be complicated. The key is to be consistent. If you look at people who are very successful, they do something that's right and just keep repeating it. 
They don't keep changing it over and over and over again, right? If anything, they just do little tweaks, but the key is stay consistent. That's why I have a lot of people I've talked to, you know, people who are successful, they don't have like a thousand different techniques. They just have one or two and they do it better than anybody else and do it longer than anybody else. That's it. All right? So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we will see you tonight. or well, I guess if you're in another part of the world, seven hours and 20 minutes from now, we'll do uh, emotional healing for worry and also some anger and resentment because a lot of times those are connected. Like somebody has hurt you and you cannot let go. Okay, that's part of it too. Worry or worry of things that are perceived and not real. We'll talk about that tonight. And I think that's it. You will, we humbly ask you to please leave some feedback. We'd love to hear from you. And some of you who are asking, hey, this is free. How do I donate? If you want to, go to, I think, uh, panicking.com or masterco.org. There's a donation button there. Press if you want to give. Great. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. Namaste, everyone. We wish you much happiness and joy and be super prosperous so you can help a lot of people. As I always say, you are be blessed. You are be blessed. You are blessed so you can bless others. You can't bless others if you're dead broke. <laughs> okay? In many levels. So, namaste. Be happy. Be blessed. Take care.